All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, navigating the passing of a loved one is never easy, but the prevalence of social media can make it that little bit harder, right? Grief expert Margaret Rice shares how not to put your foot in it online. It's easy to feel overwhelmed when it comes to managing death etiquette in the Instagram age. Um, should I post about a friend's death? Should I tag a photo of myself and the diseased? And who should I negotiate these things with? You know, sure you can Google a list of do's and don'ts, but you won't get what you need. Ultimately, the best death, um, death etiquette is heart language. Like any heart language, death etiquette is not one size fit all. It's nuanced and it needs you to make it genuine. Now, what are the societal do's and the societal don'ts when managing loss? Now, that's a conversation today. Please just hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, so um, just when we were doing the countdown to the project that um, the, the talk show we produced over two weeks, about two weeks now, Thursday 20th. I can never forget that date because we were doing countdown to our um, project um, takeoff for the production, the TV show that I did. And we didn't know, I mean, Amolola, our producer, lost her father that same day. Mm. And I remember her calling me that morning, crying so hard and saying that she didn't know that we were doing a, a countdown. We were counting down to actually, to launch a project. Mm. And we didn't know that the countdown was also counting down for her father's father. loss. Yeah. Um, Loss is a big thing, and it's only when you are in the shoes of the person that is in it that you would understand how, how, how emotionally gripping it can be. Mm -hmm. And so for me, right, um, why we are having this conversation now is everybody is just throwing left, right, and center conversations that I think, for me, they are needless. Um, are they, have there been some good things that have happened in all of the situation, especially with David O's son, for instance? I'll say yes. I was very particularly happy when I saw that they said the police had arrested or they've called in about um, nine or six people mm. into questioning. Mm. To, to Because, um, you see, in the midst of the grief, one common mistake that we make, I think, is we are so engrossed in our pain that we forget to ask why. Mm -hmm. And we forget to ask what went wrong. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, and, and I hear some religions say God gives and God takes. Mm -hmm. I get that part. I have lost a sister-in-law, for instance, before, and she died while she was trying to have a child. And I kept on, till tomorrow, I keep on saying, why was the, why were they not, why was an autopsy not done to even understand, was it a negligence mm -hmm. on the part of the hospital? Yeah. You know, but yes, I get that point that we we're grieving at that point, but I would have felt a lot more closure if I understood what happened, the why, the why mm. right? So in all of these things, there are things that we should do. There are things we should not do. Mm -hmm. Not do. The don'ts are not, you, that's not the time to ask, where were you? Where, where were the parents? Because again, that's what we're so quick to do, to throw blames mm. and say, oh, what, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? That's not the time. Sometimes in the moment of grief and pain, you just need to be quiet and just be there. Just be that's quiet. not even the time to talk. You know, so people can't even control their mouth. Like, they just keep going on mm. and on and on. And again, now with the social media era, this is like a, something that has, is, the news is all over globally because the person that is involved in this thing is a global icon, right? Yep. And so the news is all over globally. So I would, I would appreciate if we start to understand that, yes, it might be that this person is out there and everything. Mm -hmm. But what has happened, it requires some level of personalized dealing and i'm happy when i read somewhere that he is at his father's, father's place and everybody has been Joma, and everybody has been cut off mm -hmm. because that's what is needed at this time this is not yeah. the time to start because using it you know, because it. there was a there was something that uh, i remember when um, was it um ada ame when mm. she passed mm. there was something that real worry picking did and i even called her out there mm -hmm. you went to the funeral you did a video and everything yes, yes. i felt that was very insensitive so I get the part that we want to console, but we have learned, we have not, we're not separating social media mm -hmm. from a griefing person. And that's where 
you know we have this issue i think we have issues but let me hear your thoughts quickly then because we need to open our phone lines people tend not to understand what to do when there's a loss or in different things as well they think everything is news mm. somebody dies i should be the first to post it mm -hmm. somebody dies i should be the first to mention it in the yoruba culture you don't even attend the funeral of someone younger than you as a practice because you're mm -hmm. not supposed to outlive them by the same token, parents are not supposed to outlive their children. So that's why they forbid mothers going to the graves and everything like mm. that. You see, you hear somebody passed away and you're trying to let them know that you heard it from the horse's mouth. So you want to post and say, I heard it from a source, a reliable source. Mm. Why? Because it brings traffic to your page. Mm -hmm. when, like you said, I've lost a father and I've lost a very dear sister. People make the mistake when you lose somebody to come and preach at you. Mm. God gives, God takes. You don't want to hear that at that point in time. I know that they say, God, we all see in Yoruba that we don't ask. We don't question God. We don't question God. But let me tell you something. You have a right to keep malice with God when you are in that kind of pain. It's between you and God. You cry on his shoulders and you tell him what you're going through. Nobody has the right to come and start preaching the it is well. God gives, God takes. It's so insensitive mm. at that point in time. Somebody lost a child recently, a seven-year-old daughter. I sent her a message and I said, oh, you're in my thoughts. And the pain will never go away, but we'll just learn to cope with it. Gave her examples of what I had lost, my bereavements and everything. And then one day I posted something and she reacted to it. So I tried calling her, she didn't pick up. So I said, you can't handle a phone call right now, right? Went on to pray and say, not even pray, just talk to her generally like I would. And said, send me an emoji just to let me know you hear me. And she did. That's all that needs to be done. Then physically, if you're visiting someone who is bereaved, may show me. Sit down there. Because even when the person is elderly, and you think, oh, three score and ten means that they live their life, they should go. The pain of losing a parent, you can't tell me how to feel. The fact that it's a celebration of life doesn't mean that I cannot weep mm. for the loss of somebody that I lost. So even when the person is older, don't assume it's okay to be fickle with your statements. Meshonu mm. is a good practice. Meshonu and just be nodding. Mm. Let me hear your ask. thoughts, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, when it comes to loss, I don't, I, I, most of the time, I don't even know how to react around people who have lost someone mm -hmm. because I'm someone that I internalize a lot. Yeah. So when it comes to loss, I'm, I'm, I might not cry immediately, mm -hmm. but in my yeah. heart of hands, I'm probably bleeding. So the people have different ways that they deal with loss. And it's very, very important for us to allow people to deal with loss in their own way. Mm -hmm. Trying to talk them out of it is like trying to talk someone out, out of a bad mood. It's hard. Let them come out of it, but let them know it's very important for them to know that there are people around them. Should they want to listen or vent mm -hmm. or, you know, cry, you know, just let them know that you're out, you're right there beside them, with them, feeling that pain and that hurt with them and you're holding their hand, <coughs> if, even though not physically. Mm -hmm. But the instance where people see the need to use it for personal clout, it's... Beyond I keep using everybody. it, it bewilds me because <laughs> it's, it's so insensitive. A lot of people, you hear a lot of people, it's very, very important for you to give people their privacy when something like this happens so that they can deal with their grief and when they're done, mm. they might come out and have, you know, have a response or anything. But you wanting to insert yourself into someone else's mourning is actually quite bad and yeah. quite insensitive. And you know, it, it, the line has become so blurred these days that we do not know what is being done because people go to any length just to drive traffic to their page. Mm -hmm on social media but let me hear your thoughts your initial thoughts um mary then we'll open our phone lines uh, to be honest yeah maybe the platforms i've seen i'm not really seeing any um how do i put it anyone really searching for clouds because i read through some comments and it's just being heartfelt messages I mean, I guess because he's a public figure, so, you know, everyone is... In this instance, to, right? I'm yeah. not talking about... I'm talking about in general. So, mm -hmm. in, in, in general, yeah. Um, I don't know. People should just learn to keep their mouths shut, to mm. be honest. Um, 
I, for one, I'm not one to be expressive. I'm always, it's like a confused state. It hits me yeah. days or after, years you after. know. You know, I had a story as well, a friend who, um, through the pregnancy, you know, she was always posting. She's a social media person. I don't even know her personally, but I followed her, you know, through the whole nine months. I was like, ah, oh, sexy prego, you know, giving us outfits. And at her ninth month, the day she, from that, she lost the baby. She literally said she, she could feel her baby cake, you know, the day before. And she just went into the hospital the next day and they told her it was... Like I'm reading the message and I'm 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 confused because I checked her post. Ah, I've not heard from. Her. We've not seen any updates from mm. this baby. What's happening? Our baby should be out by now, mm. and I'm just confused. Like, what I, happened? You know, I, I was like, I saw she she made a post. You know, like a letter to the baby, and mm. she turned off the comments because obviously you don't want people to you know say anything and stuff. And then later again, she came on her story. I guess it's also her way of, you know, dealing. Of, yeah, of dealing with it. And I had no words to say, mm. you know, to her. I just said, I'm sorry. Mm. Just take, take heart, do you get? Mm. You know, so people should be, death is nothing, you know, anyone wishes for. The truth is, no matter how bad you think a person is, when a person dies, it Make hits you that yeah. um, it's gone. Mm. Mm. You, you, in fact, it'll get to a point where I fought with my dad so much and then I was like, ah, at least let me even have some ways to be fighting. To with. fight with mm. you. Get, you know, yeah. so it's such a sensitive topic that I don't think people should just open their mouth and say anything. No matter how the scenario was or how anything was, social media, yes, you have a platform to say anything you like, but we should be careful. And we should also tune into our human factor mm. you know, when we're putting certain things online. You know, so I had a friend, um, I, will, I want us to take a break and quickly. I had a friend I was just speaking to and I was asking, you know, I mean, when you lost your loved one, how, what, what was the most important thing that you wanted, if at all you needed anything from, from anything? He said, I mean, for him, he was just like a bit confused and he was just wishing he could just change what had happened, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, imagine that kind of a person. You then go and say, ah, God takes God me. I mean, you can actually receive a punch for that's that. Not you know, that's you know, but let's go on a break because I love to open the phone lines early. And, you know, I want to ask, you know, if you've, if you've been through a loss, mm -hmm. you know, how did you handle it? What, what, what do you wish how would you would wish, yes, people had done right? And, you know, and the things that they, they shouldn't have done. Because right? I want us to be able to, talk to ourselves mm. so when we go on a break uh, we'll open our phone lines afterwards stay with us we'll be right back all right thanks for staying with us now if you just tuned in we're discussing um, societal do's and don'ts um, especially when managing loss now please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one or the hashtag Wayshow. Now our phone line is now open. The number to call is zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. That's the number to call zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. Remember the rules: turn off the volume of your television set. Somebody was calling the WhatsApp line. We can't take the calls from the WhatsApp line. That's the number to call on display. All right, so lady, you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to say that um, based on loss, you know how people say um, you can't tell someone how to grieve. You really can't. I have a friend who lost a son um, two years ago on the 1st of October, and she still has not been able to deal. Every single day of her life, she's singing songs, tunes. Her friends, myself included, is thinking, you have three other sons. This is me from the outside, thinking you have three other sons. It's almost as if you're making it seem like yeah. they don't matter. Mm. That this, you, you died when this boy died. And you need to adjust and live for them. But you really can't say anything to anybody. You know I keep going on about my beloved sister, my beloved sister, my beloved sister. That sister died in 1992. It didn't hit me until 2012. 20 years later, when they told me she died, I just got up. I went to wash clothes. I didn't cry. I didn't, because she died abroad, so I couldn't see her. And she had, I had seen her three weeks before then. When it hit me in 2012, you would have thought, and what happened? A friend of hers died, 
And because I was the closest person to her, I was close to all her friends. So when this other person died, it was like the last connection to her had gone. And then all of a sudden, my mind tells me, Kumbi died. Mm, and then I went call. mad that's 20 years call. later. Um, Austin from Benin, I believe. Thank you for calling. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to you all. Hi, mm. good evening. Yeah. Um, actually, this, um, I blame this situation on uh, negligence on the... Oga, no, Oga we're not blaming. I'm sorry. Please, we, we are not here to throw blames, please. We're not personalizing it to David. Don't, don't, don't do that, please. Thank you. Let's not blame anybody. This, this is not the... Let the investigation... The police have already arrested... Have we detained some people for questioning, right? Let's leave them to do their job. When the autopsy result comes out and they believe that, okay, this is what has happened, then we can now talk about that part of the conversation. What we are discussing today is how do we as people manage people around us that have just lost a loved one, right? And this is one thing we we shouldn't be found doing like blaming there's not this is not time to throw blames let's just keep it away from blames today um sorry um nj please over to you yes well like like you like you said it's not a time to because um everything every people are going to be saying right now are just speculations exactly. everybody's speculating until the autopsy everybody's, result comes yeah. out where well, i am even praying and hoping that there was a cctv camera Mm, right yes. in the house because most of these houses they all, they all have cctv cameras so thankfully they've called up all the people that were supposed to be ma um, caring for the child the caregiver mm -hmm. um the whatever they've uh, all of them are in the police custody for questioning mm -hmm. so i am just praying by some that miracle that we have footages of for what the city for the last few minutes of the that's break. it because you yeah. see you can't just come up and now start to say you want to blame nothing has been said yeah. the only part that i'm excited about which is what i was saying that mm -hmm. when there's a loss we forget the part that we need to investigate. Which is true. Do you understand? We, especially in the part of this world. Mm. Abroad is a normal thing. Anybody dies, they, they must they investigate. But here, we say, oh, it is God that's take. And we don't even try to even yep. find out so what happen happened. Next. Right? And then so I am happy that they have gone in the right direction. You needed to have seen the little joy that came to my mind today when I saw that, oh, that they had, yeah, they had um, held some people for questioning. That gave me some level of joy. I said, okay, finally somebody is doing something right. Because most times we just tend to just forget about it. You know, let me take another caller. Hello? You're live. Yes, go ahead. You're live. Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead, please. It's a very painful one for for the widow's loss. And uh, whatever investigation or everything that they are going to do, I'm very sure that child is not coming back. Let's just thank God and continue to learn our lessons. But in times of loss, I in Nigeria we are, we, we try a lot in times of how to mourn and stay with somebody that lost somebody. We, I, I need to give kudos to we Africans for that. Mm. We work very well and we stay close to people that have lost. It's not that, you know, we are trying to bring in the white man's lifestyle into the, story, the whole situation. And it's now making it look like we don't have a tradition. But why in those days, sometimes we even close shops where the whole street will be, everywhere will be calm because we lost a person or an individual or a family member. Mm. So, yeah, in our tradition, we are always together. And I hope such kind of um, um, lifestyle should not go away from us. And we should always understand that when things happen, there is always forces of nature that are behind it. And nothing happens without the consent of our creator. So um, I, just, I just felt for the guy, and I know that God will strengthen him. And for whoever that is losing whatever is losing for now. Absolutely. But I still believe in our ability to right. mourn and be together when people lose something, especially here in Africa. We did try away. Nigeria was safe. I get it you, is, young okay. old man. Um, so you are saying that we shouldn't lose the culture of that togetherness when somebody passes on. You know how we rally around yeah. the family, we're there and all of that. We shouldn't lose that culture. I, I get you 100%. Thing we shouldn't lose, and most people don't understand this, during the activities leading up to the send off, send forth, and honoring the person's life, 
we gather around, and then all of a sudden everybody disappears. And then the person is left alone, and the reality hits. Let us also have a bit of continuity. After, do you understand what I mean? After the immediate shock and the laying the person in the, what do they even call it? The internment. After that, then it is the time to really start nurturing the person back to good health and coping mechanisms. A lot of distractions are needed. Mm. Let me take a caller, then I'll come to you, Mary. Mm. Um, from Nasara State, I believe. You're live. Niger State, are you there? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, ma. Hi, good evening. Y yes, ma, how are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Yeah. Uh, how, how to manage uh, a loss? Why should I have faith? In God, that before God created us, whatever will happen to us is already written by God. So patience is the best answer. If not, a potential will carry person away. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Patience. Right? Hmm. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Go ahead, um, <laughs> I don't know if the word to use is patience. patience right? yeah. um, there are a lot more words we can use in that same to replace patience. And that would be even just being sensitive is one of it. It just, it just takes empathy you. Is empathy the word we is, haven't mentioned. You know, yes, yeah. empathy is the word. And that is something that is very, people don't, that is empathy that would allow you to think before you react or before you use someone's I, I situation. Think in his defense, you know, because he said something. He said, um, God already has our, our um, whatever lined up for us, mm -hmm. right? So let me take a call and then I'll come back to that. <laughs> Lagos, I believe. Sorry, I'm not hearing their names today. Defense from Lagos. Okay, go ahead. Hello, Green. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, actually, death is such a painful thing, and nobody wants to. It so happens to anybody. Mm. Um, in areas of managing our death, I think they should let the person, if the person feels like crying, let the person cry. Mm. Then, if the person feels like being silent or maybe being quiet, let the person be. Mm. In the case of my own dad that died, I. I just asked everybody not to just come and comfort me at that moment because it was bonding me deeply inside my heart. Mm. I just sat down quietly and the all of everything, we didn't want to make everything close. I pray that mm. that God should uh, comfort the family and everyone. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I also. You know, so what. I, I mean, I, I hear defense, and that's the truth. Everybody, and this is why they say that it's not a one size fit all. Mm. So what that guy meant when he was talking about patience, you know, he said let hypertension. You know, I think he's just looking for the right word. Is that in all of those things, just be calm and understand that you know it was meant to happen. Mm. I like that thing because that's always what we hear, especially from a religious point of view. Mm -hmm. My point is, yes, right, some things will happen, but it's also important that we know why it happened. We know what went wrong. Do yeah. you understand? Because um, people always come up with different kinds of theories, you know, and make it look like it, it is wrong for you to investigate mm. when there's a death, you know. And I mean, I've seen people, I am very sure that if you go and ask the people in, the, in London, even though our queen was 90, how many years old now? They would, have done they, would st they would still do an autopsy to just have it on record to say these were the things that probably the went wrong. The, you know, and all of that. It's, yeah. it's just a simple thing. We're not just used to documenting things in this country. But let's take Loma, then I'll come to you, Mary. I think you have a comment. Loma, you're live. Good evening. Yeah.
if there is not a that we can commit suicide. So the best we can do, we don't want you to give that person too much work, but we put you and check in some work that man so much money that some people have lost their lives when the people they know to manage whatever that happens to them on their own. Mm. So now with this topic, if somebody wants something very, very dear, very quick for close relationship, even friends, you know, go here, make sure that person is in your life very much. Otherwise, before you work it, you can start losing two people at So they in a need to have a better relationship. Don't do what work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. I think what I got from what he said, except I didn't hear him correctly, is that not leave them after they've yeah, lost so, so, so Just it's, like it's, I was yeah. saying, that don't just disappear. Yeah, so of when course. When the excitement yes. or whatever. Then again, we're such funny people, human beings. Mm. We are excited about whatever news we hear until the next big thing happens. Yes. Mm. And then we forget, forget. That some people are And it's the person that has... Money. You know, it, let me say something. You know what people are saying? My own, I, honestly speaking, my own money, I think it can reach 20 years old. I don't know. Maybe it's this thing with Scorpios because, <laughs> like, I internalize things a lot, right? I might not just show the emotions and mm. all of that, but every night I can be crying, I can be sleeping, I be, you know, so mm. it, it, it'll be difficult for if somebody like me for you to think maybe just one I'm post. A, I'm over it. You understand? Yeah. Or one comment, one comforting word would make me so get over. Forever. Do you understand? For me, it might live with me for the rest of my life. Because that's how I am. Mm. Especially if the person was really there to me. Yeah. So it's something that I am even consciously working on myself to be emotionally strong mm. for anything that can happen. Because mm. you, you never can tell what will go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but, 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 for me to get to that point where somebody starts to think, oh, it is one WhatsApp message or a post or putting it on status or stuff, that will make me feel comforted. I don't think that will oh, work for when me. When people think that you should have gotten over, over it by movie. now. Like there's a life that like, span, yeah. the time. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. Yes, they are. They are. They are. I feel like the problem I have even with, with that is when it comes to the burial ceremonies. Mm. You know, I had a very this tasteful experience you know with family members and stuff mm. and for me that was just please give uh, me an example of this experience you know people who you've not seen before the man was never i never knew my dad's village until when he died and you insist that he should be buried there and you insist that we should build a house Mm. I don't understand. The ones that over dramatize. Do you understand? Like, they've never you. played any role in my life. Mm -hmm. They've never said anything and they just show up. And it's like, from where? And then they're telling me, oh, you, you have to be respectful, you have to be kind. I don't know. And I'm just know. telling myself, I said, if I was older, or maybe if I had much money, I would just I'm bury my father and call it all. And my mom's like, ah. No, you have not married. All these little things. It's yeah. it's just mm. it's it's so annoying. It's so that's for me. That's that one is another that ball. Was, that one is another. My mom knelt down. <laughs> my mom knelt down for nine hours when my so grandfather passed. Did. Okay. Because I mean, I don't know my my father's village. I don't know my mother's village. I only knew my grandfather in Benin. Mm. So, and my grandfather did not allow anybody to go to any village, right? So it was like, okay, she's the person that has been preventing you people from going to a village. Mm. Now you would exactly. have to come to the village. Exactly. So my mother knelt down for nine solid hours because she's the first. You. She's the first female. Her older but brother. They actually elders. targeting him, mm. but because he's lived abroad all his life, she she will say. You know what? You stay, stay in the hiding. Let me Let deal me with them. Yeah. And so she was there on her knees for nine hours, begging these elders. Tell you. So burial is a of... is a subject topic that will last to a, a lifetime <laughs> on its own. Like Fun. I don't understand how people do those things. But what we are even referring to now, yeah. it is how the behavior, the culture has changed, right? Especially with the invent of social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I get the part that everybody wants to just be associated with this are we doing this genuinely because we feel pain for the person that has just lost a loved one or we feel that it is it will be a nice thing to do that we are also seen to be in what's it called to, to be consoling yeah. the bereaved let me speak for myself i personally posted something today and the reason why i did was that i had seen a facebook memory that came up 
last year, 1st of February, and I was, of November, sorry, and I was jumping up saying, oh, this is the energy that I want for the rest of the year and the new year, right? So when that memory came up today, as of yesterday, as of maybe 9 p.m., when we hadn't heard the news, I was looking forward to the 1st of November, the post of another new month, November, bring it on, we're going to do this together and everything. But I woke up teary eyed, thinking something happened to me yesterday, personally. Mm. I felt that way. Why? A mother is going to bury her child. Mm. And myself, like there as I did now, I have a 25 year old, I have a 21 year old. There's no age they could ever be that would make it okay for them to leave this world before ah, me. You don't even want to know. Mm. You know it's that? even worse. There was a man that they said was 51 years old, mm. and his father was in politics or something. And they said he just died. There's no age you know, that the child can die that it makes it okay no, for you to be alive there's, there's, and there's, there's, there's nothing, your child. There's nothing. So there's a, there's a woman, I mean, I don't think she's gotten over it. Mm. So she, it was an only child. Her mm. son was asthmatic. Mm. She actually went mad. She will. She actually ran mad because this is someone that she's done his university abroad, mm. he's done his master's. I think he was, I think it was maybe second master's. Mm. She made sure that she poured every, and she's a very wealthy woman. Mm. She made sure she poured everything she had. So hoping that this will be her child. So what would you say to that kind of a person? When she called the pastor, mm. and she was telling the pastor, please wake him up. Because mm. there's nothing she wanted to say at mm. that point. Mm. Wake him up. She became hysterical. They had to bring an ambulance and to sedate her. her, like sedate her, so that they could take her to the hospital. She had gone, literally, she had gone mental. You have so to. when when I see certain things happening and I see the insensitivity of people, I keep on wondering, like, do you even understand? They can't. Right? They can't. You think this person will just go out of the way to because these are the things they, they accuse you of negligence and all. You think I would go out of my way? Purpose. A child that I carry my mm -hmm. child's life with negligence. You think I would do that? So, I mean, it, there is no explanation for it. So, my point is, that is not the time. You want to now start saying, why didn't you? Why didn't you? Don't. It's not even your like, business. Like, that's why Naji God posted and said, perfect parents, please. This yes. is not the time for you to say what you would have done. Or you've not done. done. Nobody no. just keep quiet. No. What, what about a woman that lost five children in one plane crash? That's yeah. it. What do you want to tell such a person? That about that she should not God give her God take care? <laughs> Or is it the parents mm -hmm. of the, 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 that plane crash that happened that three children, father, mother, everybody. Yes, is. So what would you say to the parents? To the, that's that all alive. Or even so, man, so that's what I'm saying. To, so society, we need to be calm. Need and to. need to understand that. You see, there are some things that are sacred. Don't touch it. Do you understand? Because when people start to do all of those drama, I keep on wondering, do you even understand the situation? You've not carried a child. Even if you've carried a child, you've not lost a child. So you cannot even say what you would do or not do. But let's take comments our, from our audience quickly. I have one. When people hear a rumor of a loss, even if real, it's best not to go ask him publicly online, even via direct call to any family member, it may be the, the unfiltered breaking news to a direct family member who may be far away and unaware. Perhaps the family has been trying to figure out the wisest way to break the news to a specific family member that they may be wrecked with the news, meaning that don't go and be saying, please tell me it's not true. Online. To someone that probably hasn't even heard. I don't know. Go ahead, NJ. <laughs> So mine mm. says, That's Charles from Kaduna, right? Yes, this Charles. Is, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is uh, Austin from Delta. Austin says, It is unfortunate that there is so much insensitivity in our society today. I mean here in Nigeria. Mm. Growing up, when people gather to console a family f for loss of a dear one, the gloom on the faces of the people says it all. What you witness is dead silence or talking in low tones, no laughter either, no pictures. Mm. I agree with you. There is no time for blaming at this, at this moment of grieving. This is the culture, is this, is yeah. this the culture of throwing blames that kept somebody, it is this culture of throwing blames that kept somebody in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. to stay put, to stay put till the um, loss of life. Loss of life. 
Absolutely. Mary, go ahead, please. Loss is never easy. People must therefore be sensitive to the needs of victims at that particular time. Oh. Hurt people hurt people. And mm. that is probably why people forget to be sensitive to the pain of others. Mm. Learn to listen more and speak less when you do not know what to do or say. Silence in times like this is golden and your presence alone can be more powerful than any of the many words you have to say. Yep. Be sensitive to each person's need per time because no two situations are the same. Well done, ladies. You all look divine. Norma. All right, thank you. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? And happy new month to you beautiful ladies. Societal do's and don'ts when managing loss. We pray that losses don't come when we do not expect them to happen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Our sister Lydie made mention of the parents passing on first uh, before the children, which is, uh, which is proper and right. My heart goes out to David mm -hmm. Adeleke, a.k.a. Davido, over the loss of his dear son. Uh, my name is Daniel Ilo, your Ways Regular fan. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Daniel. I mean, I think we've been able to keep this conversation within... Same. Yes, because it was very important that we we understood the crux of why we were having the conversation. This is not to jump on the bandwagon. There are lots of people that are dying by the minute, mm -hmm. right? So when we, when we hear things like this, first of all, let's be sensitive right. to the people around us, you know, and let us also understand what we must say and what we must not say per mm -hmm. time, you know. Um, of course, from God we come, from him we shall return, so says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Every soul shall test mm -hmm. dead. Well, that's the thing. That's what we say. But at the same time, I want us to also start to accept and accommodate the culture of ask, um, checking, what, checking what went wrong. Yeah. We're not saying that it will bring back the, the life that has been lost. But we may be able to prevent. But it, yes, it will prevent future losses and it also helps with closure. Mm. Yeah. For somebody like me, if I knew what went wrong, I would find closure quicker mm. than if it is vague mm. or she just died. Mm. What happened? Do you understand? Yeah. Some people are comfortable with she just died. Mm. I am not comfortable with she just died. And not because you want to apportion not blame to anybody. No, it's, not to, it's not to apportion blame. Yeah. If I understood that, okay, this thing went wrong. This is how foundations have been built. Mm -hmm. Some people now, I mean, there is a day for loss of um, um, infant or is it fetus loss. Which it I was celebrated recently in, in, in the month of either um, October or, or um, the month before October. Because I saw a friend of mine, I didn't even know that she, she had lost the pregnancy. pregnancy. You know, she, she, had a, she, she, she lost the pregnancy. So there is a day for to loss of a, a fetus that is delicated. So people start courses based on that. So yes. you know why I'm saying this? Because when you find out, oh, it was based on certain kinds of complications and all of that, mm -hmm. you do a research and you say, okay, people have created foundations that to ensure that they future losses do not happen yes. for other people. So yeah. These things are not because we want to just, you know, say that this yeah, is what like happened. like that practice of you know? you know, when they sew up your cervix? Yes. If people didn't have miscarriages, they would not someone have would not have researched it to know that there are some women that can't carry that must do bed without rest. them being tied Yes, up. that must do bed rest mm. when they are pregnant. And then again, sorry, very quickly, when you said about fetus dying, some people in sensitivity would think, but she never born the picking mm. Mm. You can't they say that. Me, yeah, <laughs> just keep, oh, keep your mouth shut, oh, please. Yeah. All right, so um, thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for respecting the boundaries, right? We were not um, having this conversation because we want, we want to just help people to see better and be a lot more sensitive, especially with this age of social media. Thank you so much, Mary, NJ, and Lydie. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media platforms. Is at Waysho Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote, here it is again. Grief can't be shared. Everyone carries it alone. His own burden in his own way. It's so important. It is how people mourn differently. People grief di differently. So let's not try to box everybody into a, you know, a particular style of grief. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.